I hold many unpopular opinions. Things like the right to a fair trial and the presumption of innocence are a, are a good idea, or that knowledge and science should guide political policy rather than whim and fancy. Uh, that can tell you what you want to aim for, but you know, science, knowledge, information, proper feedback and, and so on, that, that will actually get you there. Um, one of the things that uh, particularly seems to annoy people is my insistence on accurate language and the idea that a semantic argument is an important one because if you're not communicating the same concepts to the other person in the choice of words that you're using then you're not really communicating at all um, this usually comes up around the concept of socialism and trying to explain it to Americans because when I say socialism I mean the democratic socialism stemming from the utopian socialism you know through the trade union movement and the Labour Party and all the the democratic socialists on the continent now, that's what I mean by socialism but they hear communism and they don't have the definition of communism right either because they equate it to totalitarianism to such a bizarre extent that some will even try to claim that the Nazis were left-wing and there goes my monetization again bugger so I tend to insist on, on accurate terms and not mislabeling people and when I'm in accordance with people this this seems to be fine I think we can broadly agree that dehumanizing racial language is bad or that dehumanizing gendered language is bad uh, provided it's meant in seriousness let's put that little caveat in there or uh, you know dehumanizing terms describing people's sexuality are bad but somehow when it comes to political positions all the gloves come off people are perfectly happy to refer to rather milk toast conservatives as white supremacists or Nazis or whatever else you know Fox News might be pretty pretty repugnant in a lot of ways their practices might not perhaps be the best though I think they've improved a bit over time since since the Bush era at least anyway but they're not Nazis they're not white supremacists they're just conservative and for all I disagree with them I don't think they deserve to be called Nazis any more than say Diane Abbott deserves to be called a Stalinist and this should be equally unacceptable and inaccurate terms but for some reason it seems that they're not the Nazi party actual Nazis have not existed since the party was wound up in 1945 there are were former Nazis there's probably a few still dribbling into a bib somewhere in some nursing home in, in Germany perhaps some uh, members of the Hitler youth still kind of clinging on there somewhere but uh, by and large they've disavowed or died out and their party does not exist anymore so you can't actually without you know picking on someone really old or having access to a time machine you cannot actually punch Nazis though people say we just use it as a generic term well you shouldn't it refers to a very specific political and social context a, a German political party um, that existed from the 1920s I believe in a rather different form through to the the monster that we know it as and ending in 1945 there are people who style themselves neo-nazis or who get caused called neo-nazis but you know that's got that prefix neo which differentiates it you know what what do you mean when you say Nazi and why don't you say that when you mean Nazi do you mean 
racists? Do you mean white supremacists? You know, the, the modern far right doesn't actually share a great deal in common with the Nazi program. The Germans at that time, the Nazis at that time, were all for imperialism and uniting the Germanic peoples. How many far right groups in England or in uh, North America, in, in the United States in particular, how many of them argue for the forcible reunification of the Ang Anglo world? Right, you, you might find a few die-hard British imperialists who, who might be saying that since we spawned everybody else, but by and large they tend to be isolationist and nationalist. They don't want an empire, so uh, that that doesn't really seem to seem to work um, yeah the, 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 the Nazis were explicitly colonialist uh, point three on the 25 point program of the NSDAP is we demand land and territory colonies for the sustenance of our people and colonization for our surplus population you, again the the sort of isolationist stance isn't something that you that you're gonna find there um, racial purity uh, the far right tends to be uh, weirdly quite a lot more diverse <laughs> these days um, but the vast majority of the white ostensibly white people uh, in the former confederate states in the US probably wouldn't pass the kind of stringent and labyrinthine <laughs> Uh, Nazi racial purity tests because there was a lot of interbreeding um, even back in the days of slavery not all of it consensual so the racial purity I think they have an idea of it but I think it would backfire horribly on them if they installed the uh, the Nazi rules or America's shame one drop rule if they came back to that again um, let's pick out some other important ones uh, they maintained the National Health Service that had been brought in under Bismarck in the 19th century. Do you find it particularly likely that the far right will be in favour of that in the modern era? In the UK, possibly, because it's such a part of the warp and weft of, of British life here in the UK. But in America, it seems rather unlikely. Um, oh, the the no, right. There's a there's a common misconception that the the Nazis brought in swinging gun controls. That's not actually true. The Weimar Republic, which was the kind of uh, interwar years government in Germany, um, they brought in much stricter gun control laws. The Nazis relaxed them somewhat, but they did maintain some, you know, reasonably sensible gun control laws. Do you see the far right in the U.S. being in in favour of even slightly sane gun control? I don't think so. Um, yeah, it 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 goes on and on and on with things that the far right today is just not going to be in support of a uh, strong central government, albeit, albeit a Reich uh, corporatism um, the Nazis weren't socialist, they called themselves socialist, but you can call yourself anything it doesn't mean that you are, it's your actions, your policies, your professions um, if they're genuine that determine what you are. I could call myself a horse. I wouldn't suddenly grow hooves. There's plenty of other more accurate terms that we can use. Far right, white supremacist, provided we don't abuse that as well. Um, extreme conservative, extreme tradcanon, uh, neo-Nazi perhaps where it's applicable but do you really think these this drug taking um, partying punk music listening to skinheads would be considered to be anything other than degenerate 
<laughs> by the Nazis of old? Probably not. Nazis just don't exist anymore, and the word is, as so many other terms have, that it's losing its power, it's losing its ability to shock. People don't believe you. So even if you ignore everything else that I've said about definitions, there is a purely tactical reason not to use the term. It's such an obvious lie when referring to the most people that it, that it gets thrown at that you create doubt in your own sincerity, you create doubt in people's minds that these people are as bad as you say they are. If you call you know, a conservative member for, for whatever, a, a Nazi or a fascist, if you embody the lower of Rick Mail playing Rick in The Young Ones and just start calling everyone and everything a Nazi and a, and a fascist, it loses all ability to shock you undermine your own credibility. Whereas if you keep your powder dry and you only use it where it's applicable, that's that's a different matter entirely. You know, the UKIP are at the furthest right of Britain's Overton window of, of acceptable political discourse, but that doesn't make them fascists or Nazis. Cunts, but not fascists or Nazis. But if you call them that, and people then follow up and realize that they're not Nazis or fascists, then it's going to call into question all the other times you've called anybody any of those things, and it's going to make people think that those people that you've been targeting might actually be reasonable human beings. Fucking stop it, please. <laughs> Zang. <laughs>